Welcome everybody, we're going to get started. This is Margin and Mission Ignition webinar number two, and today's topic is focused on how Margin and Mission Ignition helps nonprofits boost revenue, entrepreneurial capacity, and mission impact. And we'll talk about what that means in just a couple of minutes. But before we get started, just a couple of things to note. Today's webinar will end at or before two o'clock. The line will be muted, and we'd like to ask that you please note your questions in the chat box as we go, so that during our Q&A towards the end of the webinar, we'll answer as many of those questions as time allows. So please, again, note your questions in the chat box as we go. We'd also like to ask you to get connected. So for those of you who use social media, our Twitter handles are at the Patterson Foundation and margin underscore mission. We use two hashtags, TPF Margin Mission and hashtag Earned Income. And of course, we'd love to ask you to like our Facebook pages, the Patterson Foundation and No Margin, No Mission. And for those of you who do like ours, we'll like you right back. My name is Michael Oxman, and I am one of the managing partners and principals at No Margin, No Mission. Some of you who have been at our learning labs in the past know who we are and what we do, uh, but for those of you who don't, um, I'd like to introduce Larry Clark as well, who is also a co-managing partner and principal. Larry's on the line. Hello, everybody. Um, I'll be helping answer questions at the end of the session, and I'll be back to join you. So Marginal Mission is a national consulting practice. We work very closely with the Patterson Foundation as partners in this initiative called Margin and Mission Ignition. So what do we do? Our focus is purely on helping nonprofits think about earned income with an emphasis on using entrepreneurial thinking and business strategy to help generate revenue, which in turn will help those organizations create greater social impact. Also joining us on the line from the Patterson Foundation are Michael Corley and Josephine Eisenberg. And we will ask them to just type a hello into the chat box as well. Many of you know the Patterson Foundation, you've worked with them in the past, uh, but for those of you who don't, they are a Sarasota-based philanthropic organization that works locally, regionally, and nationally to help strengthen the efforts of people and organizations and communities by focusing on three areas in particular. Addressing common aspirations, fostering wide participation, and ensuring that organizations learn and share as they evolve. So we thank the Patterson Foundation for the tireless work that they do in our community, in our region, and also for supporting this initiative, which we'll talk about in a moment. So for today, our goals are really quite simple. We would like to focus on three things. So what is margin and mission ignition? And secondly, what's, why is it valuable for nonprofit organizations? And then thirdly, how can you participate in the initiative? So as I said earlier, margin and mission ignition is one of the initiatives of the Patterson Foundation that focuses on earned income. And it's really designed to help nonprofits in the region be more thrivable. So when we talk about thrivable, we define that based on three specific areas. The first one is called growing entrepreneurial capacity. And when we think about entrepreneurial capacity, we really think about ways that nonprofits can leverage and harness what they have in terms of their entrepreneurial spirit to make it better and stronger because we believe that by being entrepreneurial, organizations have the ability to do things that they might not normally be able to do, whether it involves taking calculated risks, expanding their thinking to new and different ways of thinking and doing. And then of course, that all leads to this notion of being able to boost their revenue through some sort of earned income venture or social enterprise which ultimately is important because having a diverse stream of revenue or income in the end will make a nonprofit stronger because they're not as heavily reliant on grants, donations, and other forms of traditional fundraising. And then of course, by 
launching an earned income venture or growing one and aligning it to the mission of the organization, that in turn will help to increase or grow the mission impact of your organization. And then in the end, that all contributes to this idea of being able to do well and do good, which in turn is what this initiative is really all about. So let me talk for a few minutes just about the, really the centerpiece or the foundational element of margin and mission ignition. And really what it does is to provide nonprofits the opportunity for valuable learning and education around topics related to earned income. And I would like to just note that since 2015, our initiative has been up and running and quite successful. Hundreds of nonprofit organizations, um, individuals have participated in a series of earned income learning labs. And in fact, uh, some of you who are on today's webinar have gone through those learning labs and may be interested in coming back again. We're so excited that um, because this initiative has been so successful for the past five years that the Patterson Foundation has generously offered to bring it back again in 2019. And our Learning Lab series will kick off next month in March. So question is, have you registered yet for the Learning Labs? Some of you have, some of you haven't. And if you haven't, we strongly encourage you to do so. We'll give you some more details and information about how to do that in a few minutes. So let me talk for a few minutes just about what the individual learning labs are. As I said, there are four of them. The first one kicks off on March 12th, and it's really the broad exploration of what is earned income and why should nonprofits care about it. We'll really talk about terminology and definitions and concepts related to earned income to ground everybody and get them thinking about um, all the various components of it. So it's very much a, an introductory session that's filled with lots of good opportunities for discussion and collaboration with your teams and with other organizations. These learning labs build on each other. So as we move into the second learning lab on April 9th, It'll provide an opportunity to take that information that was shared during the first learning lab and start to apply it to exploring some various earned income possibilities for your organization. So what are they? And what are those options that are out there that you could pursue? It might be to take an existing earned income venture to the next level and grow it, or it might be to start something completely new. Or as an organization, you might have some products or programs and services that you're selling or giving away for free um, that you want to just take to the next level. That will take us into what is our third lab, and that's on May 9th. And in this lab, we then go even deeper into the topic of earned income and talk about what does your nonprofit have in place currently that would either make you prepared to succeed at earned income, or maybe not prepared to succeed. And we have a number of success factors that we'd like to share with organizations and ask them to think about and do some self-assessment around. And that would take us then into our fourth and final lab, June 13th, where the organizations would continue to build on all that they've focused on during the first three labs, but really jumpstart a business planning process. So to think about and understand what are all the various components of a business plan and what should you be thinking about as a nonprofit um, to either launch or grow an earned income venture. I will say that the labs, uh, the first three labs are a half a day. Um, and again, this is an initiative that requires your investment of time. So um, the those are dates that you'd want to get on your calendar and hold them if you have not already done so. And then lab number four is a full day. Uh, and again, um, it's because there's quite a bit of work that takes place during these sessions. And um, we, we ask the teams to really do that deep dive. So what do the learning labs actually offer? So the first thing is, as I just said, it's really an opportunity to take a deep dive into this whole topic of earned income. Rarely do organizations in the nonprofit sector get an opportunity to do that. And we do know that this venture 
through the Patterson Foundation, this initiative is quite unique in the country. So to have the support of the Patterson Foundation to be able to go in and really learn as nonprofits about this topic is helpful. The information that is shared during the Learning Labs is practical and it is quite useful. And it's something that can be easily applied to your own nonprofit organization. So in those Learning Labs, we always make sure that whatever learning takes place has a follow-up and action step associated with it so that that application is always taking place. There's definitely this um, form for creative expression and we encourage organizations throughout the Learning Lab series to look at and explore and think about what all their various earned income possibilities and options could be. So open your minds, you know, think about things differently perhaps than you have in the past and take advantage of that opportunity to brainstorm um, as a group, as a team, and even with other nonprofits in the room. The Learning Labs also have a variety of helpful tools and resources that go along with it. So being able to access those tools to actually make this process of, um, of the work in earned income easier, better, faster, smarter are things that, that we like to help you with through these tools and resources. And then finally, the Learning Labs uniquely offer an opportunity to work with your organization in a team. And we do ask that you bring your leader or executive director or CEO to each Learning Lab, as well as your board member and a key staff member. But importantly, as I said earlier, you have the opportunity to be in the room and collaborate with and learn along with other nonprofit folks. So how do they work? The Learning Labs really are open to every nonprofit in the region, and the Patterson Foundation's focus is on the four county area, so Sarasota County, Manatee County, DeSoto, and Charlotte counties. And if you have an up-to-date profile in the giving partner, you are absolutely welcome to participate in the Learning Lab series. As I said, a, your leader, executive board director, CEO, a board member, and a staff member must participate in the lab series. And if you would like to bring along um, somebody else within your organization who you think would be a good participant, you're certainly welcome to do that. We do have um, homework that we give out and that we ask you to make sure that you follow up on in between each of the learning labs. And after the first two labs, number one and number two, we have a coaching call that takes place between you and uh, one of our uh, consultants, meaning Larry, Clark, or myself, just to get to know your organizations a little bit better and to help you think about your earned income possibilities. So you've heard us talk about the value of the learning labs, but we wanted to give you an opportunity to hear from those who have actually been through the learning labs and hear what they had to say about the value. So here's what one participant said. They said they had learned so much and that they were able to put that learning to good use. And again, this just underscores the importance of what these learning labs offer in terms of good content that you can take away, learn from, and apply to your own organizations. It's actually something that um, we think about all the time as it relates to this learning lab series. Another participant said that collaboration was a valuable component. And as I said earlier, uh, there is ample opportunity for that in the learning labs, both in terms of working together with your teams from your organization and then you know, with other nonprofits. Examples of earned income ventures. We make a point to include case studies, both brief case studies and lengthier case studies in every learning lab because we do know it's important to not only provide those examples so that you can see how others have done it and succeeded, or maybe in some cases not succeeded, and then also to just get some inspiration from those organizations for purposes of brainstorming your own earned income venture. Working together, again, the collaboration, both with team and with other organizations is valuable. Being able to brainstorm, to explore new ways of thinking, opening the mind to new opportunities that may not have been um, thought about in the past is just a tremendous value of these learning labs. We encourage it. The tools, the resources, the information 
that come from the learning labs are invaluable. And as I said earlier, there's no shortage of those um, for every organization that participates in these labs. Informative and high energy, interactive and fun. We make it a point in every learning lab to make sure that they are not just sessions where you walk away with lots of information, but that you're able to use it in an environment that is fast paced and energetic and to have a good time while you're doing that. And having a process and approach with some rigor and discipline. We're strong believers that it's important to have some structure to work within, especially for organizations that are diving into this topic of earned income for the first time, or maybe have been doing it, but it happened organically. So um, again, having that kind of framework and structure in place is a real benefit. And one of the reasons that the Patterson Foundation had engaged with No Margin Omission early on is for our expertise in this space uh, of earned income. So we've heard time and time again that having knowledgeable consultants to engage them and move them through this process is enormously helpful. So that's the Learning Lab series and a little bit about the value uh, and what they provide. What happens is after the Learning Labs, there is a next phase of the initiative that is really designed for those who want to advance beyond the Learning Labs. So as I said earlier, the Learning Labs are actually open to every nonprofit um, that has a profile in the giving partner, and we encourage and invite folks to attend who can meet the partic participation criteria that we shared. But what's gonna happen is after those learning labs, there will be an application and selection process that organizations can go through if they want to advance to the next phase of the initiative. So that next phase of the initiative is some very intensive one-to-one -one consulting and technical assistance. And again, it would be for those organizations that want to apply to actually receive this intensive work and uh, a group would be selected um, who are most qualified. And just to give you a sense for how that has worked in the past, we've selected anywhere from four to six organizations to go through and participate in this phase of the initiative. So what would that include? It actually has a number of components, but I'm just gonna share sort of two of the key components with you right now. One is a business planning phase of work, and the second one is an implementation phase of work to bring that business plan to life. So let me just share briefly about each of these. The first phase where we are working with organizations one-on-one -on -one to develop their business plan would take place over a 14-week period, and it is purely focused on developing a business plan um, and having the support of us as consultants to help you do that. And the end result is not just a business plan, but it's one that's very thorough, that really dives in deep to understanding all the components of that actual business plan and what's needed for that earned income venture to succeed. And then ultimately, even having three years of financials in it with revenue projections and expense projections along with profit and loss. Once that business plan is complete, we then would go into a second phase of work, which is really to implement the business plan for that earned income venture and bring it to life. So again, we stay with the organizations that were selected to participate in this phase of the initiative for another 14 weeks and help you by working one-on-one -on -one to bring that business plan to life. Again, it's one thing to have a business plan, but it's another thing to actually implement it and turn it into uh, a real uh, venture that's going to have all the components of it up and running so it can generate both that revenue and mission impact. We're proud to say that we've had now many organizations go through the intensive one-to-one -one consulting and technical assistance phase for the business planning implementation work. Uh, you may recognize uh, some or all of these organizations but we do call these our margin and mission ignition family because they've been engaged with us um, throughout this journey. We're also happy to report that 
Collectively, those organizations have generated $6 million in gross revenue through their earned income ventures, which is impressive in and of itself. And if you ask, you know, what is the net income from that or the quote unquote profit that they've been able to um, use towards generating more mission impact, it's roughly 30 to 40 percent of that total. So, again, impressive results and one that we're always happy to share because boosting revenue um, through an earned income venture is such an important component of this initiative. We do like to recognize, however, that margin and mission ignition is not just about the money, uh, that it goes well beyond generating revenue and dollars. And those benefits are what we like to call the ripple effect. And when we talk about the ripple effect, we think about it in terms of what are all those other things that happen as a result of an organization participating in this initiative um, beyond just the dollars. So let us share an example with you from Charlotte County Habitat for Humanity, uh, because they are a terrific example of how this ripple effect goes well beyond the dollars. So just to walk you briefly through all those ripples that this organization has seen throughout this initiative, keep in mind it all started with a business plan. So that by creating this well thought out and comprehensive plan, it then led to a number of important results. First of which was to raise their needed startup capital to get their earned income ventures off the ground which then in turn created relationships, both new relationships with current donors who increased their giving, as well as adding new donors who were very interested in, engaged in, and passionate about the earned income venture that was part of their business plan. That then led to another series of ripples. So the business plan called for adding new software and new technology within the organization, which they did. They added new staff to be able to get their earned income venture off the ground. They reorganized some existing staff, moved some people around, and in one or two cases, they eliminated staff where there was redundancy or inefficiency. The business plan also helped them to upgrade their financial management system, some of their policies and procedures, because it's important as you're launching an earned income venture or improving an existing one, you have those right tools in place to be able to book the revenue, to generate the invoices, to track and monitor the financial policies and procedures over time, and a number of other benefits that go along with that. Some other ripples, they were able to purchase new equipment and tools as part of their earned income venture, which in turn helped them to think about and add some additional new resources to their organization. They added and changed their space around in order to accommodate their earned income venture. And of course, over time, they were able to grow their revenue and their client and customer base, uh, which in turn helped them increase their organizational budget, uh, resulting in an even stronger organization. Some other ripples, strengthening their marketing and their communications and their sales abilities and expertise being able to evolve and improve their board by bringing on new board members and folks with different skill sets, looking at opportunities to strengthen their organizational leadership and management. Along with earned income comes the opportunity to do things differently and to be better and stronger at what you do. And of course, um, just generally evolving and growing their entrepreneurial culture, thinking more like like entrepreneurs and acting more like entrepreneurs. So while we share with you the ripple effect that has taken place um, for one of the organizations that participated in this initiative, we wanted to share with you what we've heard from some other folks who have participated, just because again, we think it's important that you have a sense for uh, what other folks um, have said the value is from uh, this very important phase of margin and mission ignition. So Kevin Mache is a board member at the Friendship Centers who really values the insight, the expertise, and the business process that this initiative used. 
Kathy Slusser works for the Manatee County Clerk of Court and happens to work closely with the Florida Maritime Museum. And when they launched their folk school at the Florida Maritime Museum as part of this initiative, they found that it just elevated and boosted all of their other museums, not just the Florida Maritime Museum. Why? Because of the added visibility, the awareness that came from press and media articles and a number of other uh, articles that were written about this initiative. Energy and focus. Um, Sherry Moody at the Charlotte Players said that because this was such a new and innovative initiative, it actually drew people from various parts of the organization in who wanted to participate, and it gave them a nice rallying focus. Process discipline and skills. Marlene Simons, a consultant at the Pines of Sarasota, really appreciated the, the framework that went along with this and the structure, because it really did help them to um, keep things moving along in a way that were really logical, helpful, and action-oriented. Follow through. So Mike Mansfield at the Charlotte County Habitat for Humanity, because there's so many accountabilities measure, accountability measures that are built into this initiative, it truly did help them think through all the follow-up that needed to take place and to be successful at this initiative. Lisa Howard at Lighthouse of Minnesota talked about three things that this initiative provided in terms of um, some significant and sustainable revenue, obviously an important component here, a reinvigorated staff, and then by creating this earned income venture brand for their Peepers store, um, a brand that was really new and approachable for all. Having operational and executional improvement from Susan Bergstrom at the Literacy Council of Sarasota. So again, by looking at different ways to um, implement the business plan, it really created some new um, ways that the organization could be more efficient and effective in their operations. Also at Literacy Council of Sarasota, Ed Carthew is a board member who talked about bringing focus and accountability um, and results-oriented components to their, to their organization. Jay Gordon, a uh, Charlotte County Hum Habitat for Humanity board member, uh, talked about the ability for the organization to diversify their revenue. Janine Amick at the Manatee Performing Arts Center really focused on um, helping to validate this idea to external stakeholders about the importance of earned income ventures and that just because you're a nonprofit doesn't mean you have to um, not have profit. And Aaron McLeod at Friendship Centers um, talked about business planning being both art and science and that through mistakes that were made, being able to learn from them. And we wholeheartedly believe that, that mistakes are made and as long as you take that learning and build from it, it's a good thing. So that's a little bit from the organizations um, who have been through this. And now what we'd like to do is just come back to where we started which is to our Learning Lab series. And once again, we strongly encourage uh, each of you to um, participate in the Learning Labs. And uh, Lab One, again, is coming up in March. We want you to, if you haven't already, register for the Learning Labs and certainly invite you to ask your colleagues and your peers to register as well. If you haven't uh, already signed up, you should watch for an email that will be forthcoming from the Patterson Foundation tomorrow, and um, you'll be able to click on that link and register your team, hopefully of three people, so executive director, CEO, board member, and staff member, to participate. I've done a lot of talking, so if I can turn this now over to Larry, um, he will go to your questions in the chat box and answer them for you all. Thanks, Mike. Um, and thank you, everybody, for the questions that you have asked. And there are five questions. Um, what I'd like to do is read the question and then hopefully answer it for you. So the first question is, do you have to have staff or can a volunteer team come? And the answer is, if you don't have staff and you still have a um, a profile and the giving partner, you're welcome to attend the lab series. Uh, we understand some very small organizations don't have staff, but 
and we don't want to exclude them uh, from the lab series uh, for that reason. So, but you still need to meet the three people criteria. The second question is, can we bring four people instead of three? And the answer is definitely yes. The minimum is, is three, as Mike said, leadership, board, and staff. Um, but you can bring four or five or six or seven people. We had teams that brought up to eight people to each lab. So it's really up to you. The more people you bring, um, uh, the more learning takes place and the more energy um, happens back in your organization after the lab. So the next question is the CEO is an, the artistic director and he can't get away during the lab series because it's season and we have shows, would it work to bring a board member or others? And the answer to that is no. It's really important that the CEO attend if there is a CEO for the organization. Uh, and we've learned through experience that if they don't attend, um, that sometimes it just, uh, the information doesn't get shared readily. Uh, the relationship with the board members doesn't take place, and um, it's just not as strong and powerful as if the CEO does attend. So it's definitely important for that person to be there for all four labs. The next question, is there an amount of finances that an organization needs to have to be involved and participate? And the answer to that is no. Um, if you have, again, a profile in the giving partner, you're able to attend the lab series as long as you meet the participant requirements. And the fifth question is, can you give a couple of uh, tangible examples of ventures that have been either created or grown? And I'll give you three. The first is the Humane Society of Manatee County. They had a, a clinic in place with, um, with a veterinarian. And through business planning, they actually doubled the size of their clinic, added a wellness clinic to that, and then doubled the amount of clinical services they could provide through veterinary care. So one example. The second, second example is a bit smaller organization, Peace River Wildlife Center in Punta Gorda. They had a store on site that was um, small. It still generated revenue, and they decided to create an online store and take those products that they sell in their current brick and mortar store and sell them online. That's the second example. A third example is Manatee Performing Arts Center. And as you know, they do shows and performances uh, year round, but the building is empty some of the time, or some of the floors are empty some of the time. So they decided to create a venue rental business, and now they're um, consistently renting out space for parties and other activities uh, that are not related to their performances, and that's generating revenue for them. So those are three examples, um, tangible examples of ventures that have been created through this initiative. Hopefully I've answered your questions and I will turn it back to Mike. Thanks, Larry. Well, um, if anybody has any follow-up questions after today's webinar, certainly feel free to uh, email Larry or my, myself. Our email addresses are listed on this slide, lclark at nomarginnomission.org or moxman at nomarginnomission.org. As I said earlier, you will receive an email tomorrow from the Patterson Foundation with a link to register for the webinars. Um, you can also feel free to reach out to Josephine Eisenberg, Initiative Support at the Patterson Foundation, if you have any questions about the uh, learning labs. Um, one final comment is uh, we welcome your feedback on today's webinar as well as our first webinar that took place on the 5th of February. So the Patterson Foundation will be sending a link out um, to you to take a survey and just provide us with any feedback that you have regarding uh, our webinar. So we thank you again for your participation and uh, we certainly look forward to seeing you and your teams at our first learning lab in March. Thanks so much for joining us and have a good day.